Greetings, YouTube. Software like Adobe Lightroom have really powerful, effective, and easy to use tools that allow us to recover shadows and highlights or make global or local adjustments to exposure. Darktable, on the other hand, has an array of incredibly powerful tools that can help us effectively recover shadows and highlights, but I sense that for people that often get shrouded behind the complexity of using Darktable in the first place or figuring out how to utilize the tools effectively. In this video, I intend to show you how to utilize Darktable's Tone Equalizer module to effectively recover shadows and highlights within your photos, hopefully make the tool a little bit easier to understand as well. Stick around, grab some coffee, let's talk about Darktable. I'm not sure about you, but when I started using Darktable, I struggled to get the same quality of results to that of other programs like Lightroom when trying to recover shadows and highlights because I frankly couldn't figure out how to effectively utilize the tools or sometimes even know which tool to use. In tools like Lightroom, we often try to recover shadows and highlights by either globally adjusting the image via shadows and highlight sliders, or we make local adjustments to the image via masks and specifically adjust the exposure of those masked regions but it turns out that Darktable's tools are potentially even more powerful at recovering shadows and highlights when you understand how to utilize them effectively. One such tool for the job, and often the best, is the Tone Equalizer module. What the Tone Equalizer does is split the image into nine different luminosity zones, and then using a user-defined mask, we can adjust the exposure of those different zones, creating a curve, while at the same time preserving local contrast. All right, so let's go check out the Tone Equalizer module. All right, so we're in Darktable now, and here's a photograph I took in Aspen, Colorado of the Maroon Bells mountain peaks with a beautiful morning sunrise. I drove up there really early, got prepared in advance, got my tripod and camera set up, and took this beautiful photograph. And, but as you can see here, the dynamic range of the scene is very high. We have some almost blown out highlights, and then we have some very dark shadows. And I'm gonna use the tone equalizer to compress the dynamic range of the scene, producing a more natural look without overdoing it. All right, so to get this image looking exactly like how I want it to, I've already made some basic adjustments to this image, and if you'd like to check out the general workflow I use to edit images, go see the video card above. But for time's sake, the uh, most important adjustments I've made here is increasing the exposure just a little bit to get the midtones exactly where I want them to. Also, I've shifted the blues towards a purple hue a little bit because I think it adds a nice artistic softness to this image and just makes it look very beautiful. All right, so now we're in the Tone Equalizer, and in the Tone Equalizer, there are three tabs. There's the Simple tab, the Advanced tab, and the Masking tab, and we're gonna spend most of our time in the Advanced and Masking tabs. Now, before we go ahead and start adjusting the values of the Tone Equalizer to compress the shadows and highlights, we wanna first make our mask, and the goal of this mask is to make sure that the mask encompasses the entire dynamic range of the image so we can adjust those values appropriately. The best way we can do that is by first clicking these auto selectors here and getting the mask in range where we want it to be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and auto adjust these sliders now and adjust the mask. First start with the uh, mask exposure compensation. Cool. Now I'm gonna do the uh, mask contrast compensation as well. Cool. Now we know we have a good mask because this gray bar here encompasses most of this range, but we don't have a yellow bar on either the left or right side indicating caution, indicating that we're clipping one of the sides of the ranges. All right, so we can go ahead and display our mask now, and we can do that by clicking this display exposure mask button. Now we can actually go ahead and adjust the filter that this mask is using, and by default it's at the exposure independent guided filter, but you know, I actually like guided filter because guided filter tends to preserve local contrast even better. Now, if we notice this mask here, it's very blurry, hence why it preserves local contrast. And one more thing, we can actually set no filter as well. And when we do that, um, tone equalizer essentially functions as a basic tone curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and use guided filter. All right, so let's go ahead and use tone equalizer now to compress the shadows and highlights of the image. Now, if we go ahead and take the cursor and hover over different regions of the image, we can see which zones those pixel values line up with. So if we go to the sky here, we can see that we're getting zone eight. 
And if you go to the deeper shadows, they're appearing between one and two. And this helps guide the adjustments that we make. So let's first go ahead and compress the highlights. All right, so I'm gonna start by adjusting zone eight here to reduce the exposure in the sky. Now, if we just pull down zone eight, we'll end up with potentially too steep of a curve. So what I'm gonna do is adjust some of these other points as well, producing a, a, a more wider curve. All right, I think that's a good start. Okay, I'm gonna do the same for the shadows now. And going here and scoping out these trees here, I can see that this is showing up around three. So I'm gonna start pulling up zone three and four as well. Trying to get a nice, like, natural looking curve. I think noticing now that the highlights might be compressed just a little bit too much. All right, so if you continue toying with the curve a little bit more, we end up with this result here, the final result. And, you know, I think this looks great, you know. Kind of an opinion time here. I think sometimes in photography, people try to compress the shadows and highlights too much. And when you do that, you end up with this kind of almost like almost over neutralized look where there's too too much mid-tone contrast, you know. And honestly, sometimes like shadows and highlights really bring a lot of pop to the image, a lot of character. So I still wanted to leave some nice like darker character here in the trees and not have these these trees here be too bright because they weren't illuminated by the sun. I still wanted to appear natural, but I just didn't want it to be dark either. And I also wanted to pull out these pools here and get this to look kind of bright, but not make it too much too bright either. You know, you still want to retain that contrast in the image, but you know, pull it out, add some character. I think we've achieved that here. All right, so let's use tone equalizer on another photograph. So I took this photograph at Hanalei Bay on the island of Kauai during a really beautiful and immense sunset. I'm going to go ahead and use the tone equalizer to compress the highlights, maybe pull out the shadows just a little bit as well. All right, so I've already used Darktable to make some adjustments to this image to prepare it in its current state. And I've also made the mask as well in the masking tab. Let's jump to the advanced tab and start adjusting the tone curve. All right, so my goal with this image edit here is to compress the highlights such that it retains as much detail as we can in the sunset while not making it look fake either. When I photograph the sunset, you know, these rays coming from the sun were bright and I want to retain that. I just want to pull out that detail again. So what I'm going to do is start by adjusting probably, probably zone nine with the, the maximum possible brightness, creating a, an, a curve here. And I'll probably want zone eight to be maybe around one and one third stop pulled down here. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. You know, and I could pull this curve down more, and I'm guessing that that's going to be too much. Yeah, see, that's too much. So I'm going to go Control-Z that. And uh, one more little quick tip here. If we double-click any of these points here, it will reset the curve. All right, so let's go look at the shadows now. So with the shadows now, this is kind of personal taste. In its current state, it's kind of giving us like a silhouetted look, but we can actually pull up the shadows a little bit and retain some of the luminosity down here and see what's going on. And if I hover over here, I can see that it's like between zones two and three. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up probably, I'm gonna pull up zone two. Yeah, maybe like here. Yeah, there we go. Now we can bring out some of this luminosity in the palm trees. Yeah, and then we still have a lot of contrast in this photograph, but it, I kind of like that. It looks pretty nice. All right, one final example for you guys, and this is a photograph of my adorable dog, Zeke. And I've already pre-edited this image, and if you look at the 10 o'clock position, there is a light here, a lamp that's outside of the view that's illuminating his hair. In some of his strands of hair, there's a lot of brightness. And also, if you look at his eye, it's really hard to see his eye. So I wanna use the tone equalizer to compress the shadows and highlights just a little bit to bring out maybe a bit more of a natural look to this image without over compressing it and pulling out too much contrast. All right, so I've already prepared the mask for this image. And on this example, I'm actually gonna use exposure independent guided filter because having less local contrast ends up helping this image because his eye here is so dark. All right, so let's start messing with the tone curve. 
First, I'm going to go ahead and try to compress some of these highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the brightest of the highlights. So I'm going to pull it down, creating a curve. I want to overdo it. And maybe by here. Okay, that looks good. All right, let's go ahead and recover the shadows now on his eye. So if I hover over his eye with the cursor, I can see that there's a pretty big range of brightness. But um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the darkest of the darks and start pulling those up and create like an incline curve here. About there. Yeah, that looks good. I think that's pretty natural. Not too much, but you can start to see his eye now. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and flicker the Tony Glizer off and back on again for comparison. We can really see her. We were able to very selectively and naturally recover the shadows and the highlights without ruining the natural contrast of the photograph. This goes to show how uniquely <laughs> insane, frankly, the Tony Glizer is when we apply it effectively. As we can see here, the tone equalizer gives us a great deal of control over the recovering of highlights and shadows, yielding exceptional results. Now we could make local adjustments using things like masks, but due to the smooth nature of tone curves, tone equalizer often yields better results. Hey, so I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comment section below what you found valuable and helpful in this video. And also let me know if you disagree with anything I said. And lastly, if there's any pain points you have with Darktable, also let me know because it gives me great ideas for future videos. Hey, so thanks for taking time out of your day to watch my video. Hope you found it valuable and intriguing. If you did, leave a like, it really helps out my channel. Also, if you'd like to check out more content like this, subscribe to my channel. And lastly, if you'd like to check out some of my photographic work, see my website in the description below. Hope to see you in another video.